Lama 3 was just released a few hours ago from when this video is posted. Uh, I'm not going to spoil too much right now, but Lama 3 is absolutely nuts at a bunch of benchmarks and evaluations. So before we jump into the nitty gritty, uh, you might want to consider leaving a like and subscribing as it's completely free. You can unsubscribe at any time, uh, and it also helps recommend and uh, spread this content throughout the YouTube platform so that others can see it too. So I'm going to go over you know, just a bunch of links, pretty much all the resources that we have here, including chatting with the model itself, um, the blog post from uh, Meta, uh, the Hugging Face site, and just how to set it up locally, and then maybe some other stuff later. We'll see. So we'll just go ahead and jump into the evals first. So, you know, they have some goals and a whole philosophy around this, but uh, I just want to make this short and quick. So you can, you can of course, look this up. This is a very popular site. Um, but yeah, so New 8, 8 billion and 7 billion parameter Lama 3 models are a major leap over Lama 2. So to actually illustrate how how uh, how much better this is, the 8 billion parameter, the, the, the worst Lama 3 model is actually a little bit better than the best Lama 2 model. So Lama 2 7 bi 7b is here and Lama 3 8b is right here. So you know it's it's kind of just it, it kind of just illustrates how how much how insane this is. Um, we have some instruct model performance. So this is, I believe, the fine tuning. So, you know, you got some nice benchmarks here. Of course, the 7 billion is going to outperform. Um, but compared to like Gemini Pro and Claude 3 Sonnet, it does remarkably good. It actually, uh, you know, kind of hits home three of the three of the five benchmarks here. We have the pre-trained model performance. Again, uh, it sort of just hits it home on every single one here. Um, but a lot of this, a lot of the reason why you see this is not just because of the actual architecture of the model, but also just the data and uh, like the quality of the data, the techniques they use to make it better, um, and the training cluster and just the efficiency that they have in place, the giant, you know, distributed computing data center thing. Before I jump into the model architecture, I'm just going to do a demo of the actual model itself. So I can say, um, hey, solve the trolley problem. So the trolley problem is, yeah, so a classic thought experiment, drowning trolley, uh, kind of tram or streetcar is headed towards a group of five people who are standing on tracks and unable to move. So the trolley is right here. There's people that are, you know, right in front of the train. You're standing next to a lever that controls the switch that can divert the trolley onto a side track. And on the side track, there's one person standing there or, or is tied to the track. So you can either not pull it and five people die, or you can pull it and cause the death of one person. This is the this is the ethical trolley problem. So the dilemma, um, see, it's going to obviously return with a question here because it's not going to you know revert to trying to you know kill anyone. It's not going to say, oh, I'd rather kill you know the one person instead of five. Um, but I'll say um, you must make a choice. I see what you're doing here. <laughs> so I would pull the lever. Yeah. So um, you know it kind of just dodges it, but it doesn't go all chat GPT style and just like avoid it and says I'm not I'm an AI I don't have the obligation to decide when anyone dies or not. But um, you know it takes the utilitarian approach, of course. Um, that that's just like a cool example, and we're going to use this more throughout the video, of course. But uh, I guess now we can sort of just dive into running this thing locally here. So I have a Llama three folder. Uh, it's just in just in a mounted directory, and I get cloned this, so you can go to the uh, you can go to the website. Where is it? Yeah, so you can go to getup.com slash metalama slash meta3. I'll just have all these links like the blog post and this in the description. Um, but you can head over here and just see all the links. And to download it, you know, you need to, it, it's the same thing as Llama 2, um, except, you know, it's just, just slightly different commands and everything. So the same setup process, you need a key to verify. You do a download script to download the weights onto your computer. Uh, and then you can and then you can run it and inference it. So uh, if I wanted to do this, you know, on my local rig here, I would do, you know, pip install E. So, you know, it, it would build all these and it says requirements already satisfied because I've already installed these. But uh, if I wanted to say torch run, I would do the example completion, try this out. And um, I actually would get let's let, let's see, it's going to give me a memory error, but uh, keep in mind, I only have, yeah, there it is, CUDA out of memory. So keep in mind, um, if I do NVIDIA SMI, I only have 8 gigabytes of VRAM. 
And so if 1000 of these is being used for recording and then some other of it is used, being used for like other tasks on the computer just to like run on its own, like graphics and, you know, the monitor and everything, then uh, you just simply don't have enough uh, capacity on the GPU to actually run the model. So it's advised that you use like a 10 gigabyte or 12 gigabyte or more GPU to run this uh, lower, lower model. So, um, you know, it doesn't work if you're on an eight gigabyte GPU, it probably won't, but uh, that's just a heads up there. So uh, you can, you can use it in the cloud and you can use the little chat interface, of course, but that's kind of just how you run it. You just get those, those models installed and then, you know, just make sure that it's in this directory. Um, if I go LS, you'll see I have the uh, 8 billion and the 8 billion instruct model. So uh, that's, that's pretty much how you set it up locally. Um, if this video performs well, I will actually do a little demo of this where instead of talking to it locally and having the model like run without internet or like completely offline at all, um, I'll actually run it in the cloud here. So in AWS SageMaker, they actually have uh, all these models up already and you can launch them in a notebook. So like the Meta Llama 3 7 billion parameter instruct model. So you go view and then uh, you can you can view code and then open it and then play around with the model on your own. But uh, I'm not going to do this now just because of time constraints and just getting this video out. So uh, if this if this, if this video does well enough, I might actually make a little tutorial on setting this up and being able to talk to the, the 7 billion parameter instruct model locally. Um, but for now, they just have some docs around this. So if you go to, you know, I might put this in the description as well, but uh, you know, you can go to the, the documentation for this and you have all the different Llama 3 and, and, and Llama 2 models and, and you can do a bunch of stuff with this. So AWS, GCP, Microsoft Azure, um, and then other hosted APIs. So um, I would probably go with either the Bedrock or the Sage Junker, uh, SageMaker Jumpstart approach. Um, so that's what the next video would likely be on. But uh, this is this is pretty much just a doc. So I'm not going to go too, depth, too much in, uh, in depth to this, but you can review it on your own time. So now we're going to get into the interesting part of this, which is the architecture of the model. So um, they use a 128K vocab size tokenizer. So vocab size is pretty much just the, the number of tokens in the language that it has access to. So in, in plain English, we have like 200, maybe, maybe like a few hundred characters to use. So like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, those are all characters. Um, and then words would be like, you know, model architecture. Um, and so it sort of it sort of operates on a on a subword level, so uh, it has you know it has a bit more uh, vocab. So it's not necessarily um, each word, but it's little parts of words that are very common, and uh, it's it just sort of groups them together so that it can utilize the language more and have an optimal set of tokens that work well with the model architecture. But this is a whole research thing. I'm not going to go too in depth into this because uh, it's going to be hard to wrap your head around this if you, if this is new. But uh, the main innovation here is GQA or grouped query attention. And so this is one of those cutting edge research things that I typically don't go over in depth. So we're actually gonna outsource this thinking to uh, Meta AI. And so I did a little bit of this um, before the video, but I said, explain grouped query attention to me like I'm 10. So <laughs> it says, imagine you have a big box of full toys and you want to find a specific toy, but the box is too big. Um, so you, you pretty much give some information like, oh, I want a red ball. So it's going to sort out all the red toys for you. Um, and then you can just look at those, all the red toys and then do some stuff with those. So instead of looking at everything, it just has a little filter, like a sparse filter that it looks at this box of toys with and sorts some, some things out. So, you know, if you're more technical into this stuff, you might be familiar with uh, the self-attention mechanism or, you know, group query attention in this case. So it's essentially just a, an attention variant that is going to apply a sparse filter and look over the peak or the, or the top K attention scores. Um, and that's just its way of filtering out. So instead of doing the entire attention computation, it's going to do a way more efficient variant of that so that that actual attention uh, computation that runs on this massive, you know, GPU cluster is drastically sped up. And uh, it also performs pretty well too, because it, it takes the most important attention scores out of there and feeds it into the next layer of the network. So that's just a breakdown of what group query attention is. And I, I just double checked and said, is my intuition correct? And it said, 
that's correct. You're you're in, you're describing a key concept, so it's you know it's um it's it's pretty smart. It knows how to conversate and um yeah. So top K filtering, uh, thresholding, hierarchical, all this stuff, and it it just does a really good job of explaining and ensuring that we understand the problem. So going back to the blog post, this thing was trained on fifteen trillion tokens. So fifteen trillion is quite a bit. Um, a lot of which actually. Uh, that, so a lot of this training data was actually created by Llama 2. So training data set is seven times larger than Llama 2 um, and has four times more code. In training data, they used uh, they used Llama 2 to generate the training data for the text quality classifiers powering Llama 3. So <laughs> in, in nerd speak, that's, you know, just, just to kind of break that down, they're pretty much taking a bunch of unfiltered and unparsed text data and they're feeding it into Llama 2 saying, make this better because... Um, Llama 2 just gets to it just gets to know the answers, right? So it gets to see, oh, this is the prompt, and then this is the this is the answer, or this is like the piece of text data, and it feeds it into Llama 2 and it says, okay, we're not gonna pay that much money for you to filter this. This is why we're using a lower model. And then it gives you like a pretty nuanced explanation of what's happening. Because Llama 2 isn't terrible either. So you can still feed it into this model and still get a really good explanation without having to, you know, use custom data parsing tools and all and you know, complicating the entire stack. So you could just feed it into a smaller dumb model and uh, as long as it knows the answers, it can just provide a really good explanation. And Lemma 3 is trained on that. So this is how they were able to scale up training data a lot, um, which is a really innovative uh, and cutting edge approach to this data stuff. Um, but you know, they, they, they have a bunch more stuff here. So, you know, compute utilization, like 400 teraflops. I don't know if you know the, uh, the teraflop count for like an H100, but it's, it's, uh, you know, typically doesn't get as high as that. So, uh, just essentially just parallelizing and just optimizing the absolute crap out of their entire cluster and all of the software and algorithms that are running on it. So for, for this kind of stuff, you're not just running like regular PyTorch code, you're actually running uh, like a full like a full CUDA kernel on it and it's you know you have data parallelism so it's flowing in parallel on multiple cores and then it's thrown into the GPU and it does this you know group query retention and this tokenization and the whole thing like the forward pass and backward just extremely extremely quickly and so when you optimize it so much you can actually get really really high um, uh, compute utilization so that's what they did here um, you know pretty big GPU clusters and other than that, just, just some more efficiency standards. So, um, you know, we developed scalable storage systems, data, you know, detection mechanisms for corruption and whatnot. And so just this just increased the effective training time and, and uh, GPU uptime, um, as said here. So then we go into RLHF. And so you have things like PPO, like proximal policy optimization, and uh, DPO, which is deterministic policy optimization. And so I'm not really an RL guy. I've made a video on this before, but I'm not an expert on RL. So it's pretty much like you say answer A is better than answer B and answer C. And so you want to pick A. But you should also know that D is better than answer C. So you sort of get this hierarchy of answers and it knows what's the best one to pick and what's the worst one to pick based on the hierarchy. And so instead of just saying, you know, this this prompt sucks or this answer sucks, um, you you give it a more a more nuanced understanding of the situation. So it, you have multiple options. You don't just have either one or zero. You can you have multiple to choose from, like a multiple choice test, and then it ranks in order, like what's the best response. So that's that's kind of a new approach that they took here, and that's called preference ranking. I also thought I'd mention that there's actually a podcast that was released literally two hours ago by Dwarkish Patel. So he does a bunch of podcasts on YouTube, and he recently had a conversation with Mark Zuckerberg on the newly released Llama 3, uh, new models, um, you know, bioweapons and data centers and, and all this stuff. So really cool conversation. It's an hour and 20 minutes long. Feel free to give that a listen. But but honestly, that's that's pretty much everything. Like I'll make a video on this uh, Amazon stuff and, and scaling it up in the cloud, but uh, all these repos are out. Uh, you can get model access like instantly. They don't they don't take time to, uh, you know, roll it out. It's like done when and done like that. And all this stuff is out. So, I mean, you have all the custom eval benchmarks. You know, this is in the Llama 3 Git repo as well. So, you know, you could just go here and then 
you could look at the eval details, um, just a markdown file containing all of this, and you can look at all the custom, uh, you can look at all the custom evaluations. So uh, this is Lima3, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Again, if you if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Um, if you're interested in perhaps one-on-one -on -one tutoring or, con or consulting services, I also have a link in the description. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me, and you can tell me about your project and get some help on it. Um, or even if you want to integrate this stuff with your business or, you know, name your use case, um, I can give you a hand with that. So uh, that's all. I'll see you guys in the next one.